Many of us agree that for shooting video, the form factor, power zoom, and overall ergonomics of a camcorder favor a mirrorless camera or DSLR. But there's not that many camcorders left. Now, Sony has always been considered one of the top names in camcorders. And is this model Sony's best 4K consumer camcorder yet? But released in 2017, can the picture quality hold up to today's standards? Is it still a good option? So plain and simple, is this a camcorder you should consider? Is it worth the price? Now, we're not just going to sing its praises without going through a series of tests. And we're also going to compare it to its smaller sensor cousin, the AX53, which I recently reviewed. And if you happen to have a similar model to that, like the AX33, that would apply as well. Now, all the clips you're going to see in this video are straight from camera in the standard profile setting. But you know, with the AX700, you can go way beyond that and shoot in a variety of different profiles, including S-Log and HLG. So if you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, not sure if you should get this camera, or maybe you have it and you want to learn a little more about it, you've come to the right place. We're also going to test autofocus, low light, slow motion, photo quality. Yes, it takes pictures too. This camera does have quite a few tricks up its sleeve. It's scary how much we're going to cover in this video, so stay tuned. So the AX700 replaces the prior AX100 with dual card slots, better autofocus system, and S-Log2, 3, S-Gamut, and HDR. Now there are some professional and industrial versions of the same camera with basically XLR inputs, some more sophisticated video connectors, but they're a lot more expensive than the AX700, which at its heart has the same sensor as those models which is a 14 megapixel sensor paired with a 12 times optical Carl Zeiss lens, 29 to 348 millimeter equivalent, f2.8 to 4.5. Now this model is equipped with two SD card slots, so you don't have to worry if something goes bad with one of your SD cards. If you have redundant recording, you're always safe that way. More and more professional and semi-professional cameras are including this feature. But a not so common feature that the AX700 has is that tiltable viewfinder, a very welcome addition. Now that viewfinder is small by today's standards, only 0.39 inches, but it's a 2.3 million dot OLED and delivers a nice crisp image. When you open the LCD, what's nice is it starts the camera up. It's fully articulating 1.5 million dot three and a half inch LCD. And when you close it, it will also shut the camera off. Same holds true with the viewfinder. Pull it out, it turns the camera on. So there's really no need for a power button on the camera, but the camera does have plenty of buttons. The zoom focus knob will control what the front ring does. You have an autofocus manual focus toggle switch right in front and the inclusion of dedicated buttons to change your most frequently used controls in video, iris, ISO gain shutter speed right on the camera is a welcome addition and this actually sets the AX700 apart from its smaller sensor brothers but the big selling point is the larger one inch sensor over the smaller AX53 and the zoom switch on the AX53 is just a little rocker switch and the 700 has a larger more traditional camcorder style zoom rocker with a bigger recess for your fingers and having a nice smooth camcorder style power zoom is so much better than that jerky zoom you get with the DSLR. With its bigger body than the AX53, there's more dedicated custom buttons so you can assign functions to them and you do this via the menu. It's very easy to do and this camera offers you a host of picture profiles as well. So if you're into color grading, you have that option with the 700. Now comparing the 700 with the smaller sensor AX53, it's quite a bit heavier, 32 ounces versus 22 ounces. So you're gonna feel the difference. Again, that LCD gives you a nice bigger image. The lens ring is much wider on the AX700 than the AX53. 
the AX53 only has one manual button, so you'll be digging into menus a lot less with the 700 because of its dedicated buttons. Unlike the AX53, the AX700 has a full-size HDMI port. HDMI is turned off when recording 4K internally. Internal resolution is 4208 bit, but the HDMI output is 422 and looks to be 10 bit from what I can tell. The AX53 has the more unreliable micro HDMI port. Both cameras use the same battery and you can use longer batteries to get almost unlimited recording time. And that's what's great about a camcorder. You get a slightly wider angle on the 53 and a longer zoom and that electronic lens cover. Both cameras offer an extended zoom, which Sony calls clear image zoom. Now the one inch sensor AX700 goes for nearly double the AX53. But since these cameras have been out for a while, a lot of people are looking to upgrade and there's a lot of inventory on the secondary market. And if you're lucky like I was, you can get a really good deal. I got mine at a significantly reduced price and it was like new and I'm really happy with that. So we are gonna compare the image quality of these two cameras in a bit to see if the AX700 is worth the premium price over the little AX53. So stick around for that. But in the meantime, do me a favor and take a quick second and hit that like and subscribe button if you're getting something out of this video. It really does help the channel. But right now I'm gonna show you some video footage taken around New York City with the AX700 4K30 video straight out of the camera, flat profile, no grading whatsoever. This is just video straight out of the box at the standard setting. Okay, so let's see if this larger sensor AX700 produces a sharper image than its smaller sensor counterpart. I noticed this park sign. I thought it would be a good resolution test. Here is the AX53 and here is the AX700. You see more of a color rendition difference than anything else. Again, here's a 53. It's at wide angle here. You notice more of a difference as you zoom in. You can see more sharpness on the 700. It goes quick. So let me freeze the frame. Here's the 53. Here's the 700. And side by side, I do like the better colors though on the 53. More saturation, but I think there's more detail on the 700. So what this observation leads me to believe is that the lens on the AX700 may be better at telephoto, a little bit sharper, whereas at wide angle, they're a lot closer. Now, as for the color difference between the two cameras, remember the 700 is more of a prosumer camera. So in the menu, you really can tweak your image to your heart's content, color level, black level, saturation. Here in this particular scene, I think I was a little too uh, creative and I really pumped up my saturation and sharpness too high. So everything looks a little hyped, but just to give you an idea of what you can do, there's so much detail in this image. Oh, come on, old timer, you can do better than that, can't you? Yeah, this camera really is a hit. Now, remember I told you, you can take photos with the AX700 as well. So I took out another one inch sensor camera, the Sony RX10 Mark IV, which I reviewed, and this really is a great camera. Probably not the fairest comparison because this is more of a stills camera and this is more of a video camera. 
This has a 20 megapixel sensor. This only has a 14 megapixel sensor. But again, as a point of comparison, let's take a look at the same park sign and see how they compare. So using that same sign as a test at wide angle, here is the AX700 and here is the RX10 Mark IV. A lot sort of brighter and more contrasty. And you can see the richness is really there with the RX10 Mark IV. Now, what about low light? Here is the AX53 in a very dark room. Now, this has a small cell phone size sensor compared to the one inch sensor of the AX700. You can see a lot more detail. F2.8, 27 dB. And for giggles, let's just switch to the RX10 Mark IV. And even though it has the same one inch size sensor as the 700, it looks so much brighter than even that does. It's uh, surprising that RX10 Mark IV really is quite a camera but you can see the AX700 superiority to its smaller sensor AX53. Now back to the AX700 in a difficult lighting situation. The sun's outside and they're in deep shadow. The 700 adjusts very nicely and gives you a nice image. And this is just showing you when you're in manual mode with the AX700 in a dark situation, how lowering the gain will actually control the grain in the image. So you can tweak your image to make it look just how you would like. If you're shooting at a ceremony or event, there is a hot shoe for a light. And as a throwback to the old camcorders of the 90s, Sony included a night shot light here. Without the night shot light, everything is very dark, but with the night shot light on, you have that green ghost hunter type effect. Perfect for a budding Blair Witch director like me. Yeah, right. Okay, well, moving on. You see where it says zoo in the display? I That confused me. I'm like, am I at a zoo? Well, actually, that's the zoom level reflected in numbers. And you can just set that in the menu, either to number or not. Maybe it's better not. Now, that clear image zoom is intriguing. You get two times closer in photos and one and a half times in video. And let's take a look and see if you notice any degradation. It's supposed to be a clear image zoom, meaning there's going to be very little degradation. Can you see the difference? Well, let's do a little test and see if you can. Is this a pregnancy test? Oh, oh no, no, no. Don't be silly. This is just a test to see if you can see the difference between the clear image zoom and the full optical zoom without knowing if it's activated or not. So you can see if your mind is playing tricks on you. Is this optical or clear image? The answer is pure optical. Optical or clear image? Pure optical. Optical or clear image? Clear image. Optical or clear image? Clear image. Optical or clear image. Clear image. Optical or clear image. Trick question. This is four times digital zoom, which I honestly don't recommend. But in case you wanted to see it. Yeah, it kind of looks like crap. Crap, I like crap, I love crap, I need crap. And the lens appears to be parfocal, going from wide to zoom. Everything stays in focus throughout that range. The camera has two zoom speeds. Here is the fastest zoom speed, maybe for dramatic effect. And there's also a slow zoom speed. Now this is handheld footage as well. So at full zoom, pay attention to the stabilization. I'm trying to hold it as steady as possible. Stabilization is on. And I think it looks pretty steady and pretty good. Now some of you vloggers may want to know how the camera stabilization is if you're moving, such as walking. And this is just to give you an example. Here I am walking at just a regular clip, just to give you an idea of how it works. Here is my arm at full extension. I have fairly long arms, so Let's say your arms aren't quite as long. This will give you an idea of what it looks like at full wide angle if you want to vlog with the AX700. I do get questions from time to time. Should I get a wide angle converter? And while you can do that, just remember you're putting an extra piece of glass in front of a very high quality Carl Zeiss lens. So unless you get a really high quality wide angle converter, I kind of don't recommend it. But if you do, just make sure it's 62 millimeters because that is the filter thread for the AX700. 
Now, although this camera doesn't have the latest AI autofocus features, it does have face detection. And I tested it in the park and it seemed to find my face, lock onto it very well. And you can see it maintains the focus as I move in and out of the frame. But your mileage may vary. Now, in this particular scene with a pigeon on my balcony, the camera seemed fixated on focusing on the bars of the balcony and does not want to get uh, the pigeon in focus. I was struggling. Here's another bird. Same issue. There's no animal eye detect autofocus in this camera. But in all fairness, in this situation, I could have used the touch focus feature where you simply touch on the LCD panel on the portion of the screen you want in focus. I found in practice, however, this feature is sort of hit and miss. Like in this example, it sort of works and sort of doesn't, whereas the bricks are supposed to be in focus there and we're not. The foreground object here is in focus, but switching to the bricks, foreground object is really what's staying in focus. But most of the times I would say the autofocus works. Like in this situation here, it racks focus very nicely. You also have macro focusing abilities with this camera, which is very nice. Now let's see how the lens handles flare and ghosting when it's pointed towards the sun. Not too bad. And as far as sun stars go, this is at f11. Sun stars really are not that great. On a very bright day with no neutral density filter, you see the motion is kind of strange. You see the individual water droplets. It doesn't look natural. Turning on neutral density gives it more of a natural motion. Now there's three different neutral density settings and the camera indicates in the lower left which one it wants you to engage. You have to manually press a switch to go from one to two to three. The problem is, as the scene changes, the ND number is gonna to change too. So you find yourself constantly switching from ND off to one to two to three. And this is distracting and causes the video to be jerky if you keep changing it. It would be nice if there was an auto mode where the camera would do it automatically for you as opposed to having to go from one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it's nice in a pinch that the camera can take a picture for you. And the pictures really don't look half bad. Well, really only half. It's a little crazy though. If you're shooting video and you decide you want to take a picture of something, it, you have to go into the menu and change the mode from movie to photo. And this really takes a while and is very inconvenient. A much better option is customizing one of the many camera buttons to be a toggle from movie to photo and this will really speed up your workflow. But let's face it, you're not getting this camera to shoot photos. It's a video camera at its heart. Actually, it's a camcorder. So let's see what it can do as we take it around the city. This guy thinks he's so great with his mirrorless camera and G lens, but we have our AX700 and you can hear how it picks up the sound. Neutral density one is flashing. This one needs a haircut. Speaking of haircuts, I noticed this in this person's pocket. Is that like alive? It, please drop me a comment if you have any idea what that is. What? That is, that's so creepy. In the city, you see just about everything, including individuals which are very enamored with themselves. This young lady really seemed to enjoy taking selfie videos. She took it to a whole new level and I captured this all with the AX700 and I was really very close to her. This is not like I was really far away. I was only a few feet away from her and she was so into herself, she barely even noticed that I was there. Ah, there, she just noticed me, I think. And that other girl was so comfortable with her phone. I figure I'd share this with you, someone who's 
having a little more of a struggle. But it did capture the orange of her cell phone, right? And speaking of colors, I wanted to test it on this fire engine, and it got the color right on fire engine red. Well, the story's not over quite yet. The phone is still in her hand as she continues to take a nice, healthy run. I, I just hope she doesn't run into anything. Will she notice me as the camera is pointed directly at her as she's passing right my way? Ah, yeah, she gives me a little smile there. I think she realizes. I can start now. You think she goes to the bathroom with the phone? See how far the AX700 can track her and how, even in the distance. Sorry guys, I know it's a little off topic, but if I see something interesting while I'm doing my testing, I figure I'd share it with you. Well, I think now is a good time to talk about slow motion. But let's do fast before we do slow. The camera can shoot in a wide range of frame rates, Four frames per second will produce a really fast motion effect, almost like time lapse. 15 frames per second is like twice normal speed. And then you have your slow motion. The 480 quality is not great. You get a little better quality at 240 frames per second, but these are not in 4K. They are clearly in love. Are you in love now with the AX700? But I'm not really crazy about those camcorders. Well, I guess you can't please everyone. But what about pleasing you? Is the AX700 for you? Well, I definitely can see it for long form events because there is no recording limit. And with that long battery, you can sort of go on and on and the camera will not overheat. That is a really great option for sporting events, for church ceremonies, for weddings, when you don't have to worry about your camera shutting off or overheating or running out of juice or having that 30 minute recording limit. It really becomes an option for wildlife shooters with the long zoom and the more than adequate clear image zoom as well. For people that don't want to carry around multiple lenses and have to worry about changing them on the spot and then getting your sensor dirty, it's a really nice all-in-one solution. You are paying a premium over the smaller version, the AX53 or the AX33, very similar cameras but with the manual controls and features and larger sensor and better low light performance, if you're willing to spend the extra money and if you're willing to buy it secondhand, you can save even more money. So is the camera still relevant today, even though it doesn't have the latest and greatest autofocus features or the most updated sensor? I still think it is. You saw the image quality. That is up for you to decide. If you're an amateur and you just wanna use it in a point and shoot capacity, you can. But if you like to access more of the manual controls or shoot in the various video HDR formats, you can do that too with this camera. It's interesting because we're starting to see a resurgence of older technology. Have you noticed that? Digital cameras from the 2000s are starting to make a comeback. People want that 90s look. Vinyl records have already made a huge comeback. Who would have thought that would have been possible? Instamatic cameras are on the rise. So maybe shortly, camcorders will become popular again as well. Maybe you want to be on the cutting edge and have one right now before that happens. Should I bring my camcorder? You might be hearing questions like that pretty soon. If you're interested in seeing some of my retro videos, please check out my channel as well, where I review not only newer technology, but cameras from the 80s and 90s, which started a revolution. And thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.